Pinky's wife, Debs, is on her way back from the village surgery. The hours of waiting are about to end. Hi. What happened? Well, I went to the doctor. But uh, no, he says, congratulations. And we were talking about which hospital to have the baby in already, and he's put the first antenatal appointment, and... Um, so the rumours are true. Pinky is to be a dad. Debs is very laid back about it. She is a nurse, after all. And he said, any concerns or anything, just give him a ring and phone him. So how, um, how many weeks did he say? Well, he said about six weeks. Congratulations. Thank you. Because that's what you wanted, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I had this feeling that something more was going on and I've been getting morning sickness and I kept putting it to one side and saying no, it's just a bug that's going around but deep down I knew there was something more. Excited? Yeah, we've already thought of names, haven't we? Mm. Yeah, already thought of names. Thomas and Rebecca. Boy or girl, but don't really mind what we, uh, uh, what we have. There's a history of twins in James's family there. Yeah, we're waiting. Uh, no? Yeah, it'll be the size of a house by the end of nine months. Mm. That's what you're not looking forward no. to, is it? Yeah. I'm not looking forward to all the extra weight, that's for sure. You're going to have a big family? You're going to have lots and lots of babies? Uh, we'll keep practising. <laughs> We're having a baby, my baby and me. You'll read it in Wimcho that we're adding a limb to our... A wet and windy dawn a few miles from the village. For George the gamekeeper, this is one of the most important days of the year. His months of work and preparation will now be put to the test. In just a few hours' time, the sound of the guns will herald the start of the shooting season. The guns come from all around. A dozen lawyers, bankers, surgeons. For one day, they're all transformed into country gentlemen. Hi, Charles. How are you? Very well, sir. Good. Nice to see you. Sir. Is the father turning up or are you shooting no, his face? I'm taking the... But it's more than just a nice day out and a bit of sport. At a couple of hundred pounds a go, they bring much needed cash for the farm. That's why George's job is so important. All now depends on the weather. What are the conditions like today? Well, I'm hoping the rain has stopped. We like a bit of wind, you know, to lift the pheasants out a little bit higher. There's plenty of wind today. Yeah, but you don't need too much rain. Otherwise, your pheasants get so wet and miserable and they just don't want to get up, don't want to fly at all. How many birds do you need to get today? Well, I'm hoping for 100 plus. That's what we, you know, that's what the figure we're heading for. 100 plus. Makes everybody happy. The guns are happy. So if we get 100 today, you're a happy man tonight, are you? Be very, very happy. If you don't get that, the future of the shoot's not too I good. I could be on the redundant list again. As simple as that. As it's turning out, it's the worsening weather conditions, not the threat of demonstrators, that's causing concern. George and Tony discuss a last-minute change in tactics. Well, they we'll want to be right the up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know where this wind's going to take them, isn't it? Straight back over there. Yeah. Protocol is very strict. No matter how rich or privileged they are, it's George who's in charge. And on arrival, all must pay their respects. With moments to go, Tony allocates the gun's shooting positions and does his very best to explain the new order of play. And what we'll do is we'll swing you round wherever you are, left-handed possibly, uh, and go up on that extra peg. In other words, one will be further over, two will be where one is, and so forth and so on. OK, all right. Some of the less experienced guns look a little bit confused. <laughs> Chatterbox, 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 talking all day long. Chatterbox, 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 like an endless song. Oh, it's Alison this morning. At Sheila's hair salon, 
hot news is emerging about Alison, who used to run the Star Pub next door. I haven't seen her for ages. No, So it's nice to see her. Yeah, I gather she's, she's working. I think she's got a job in the village. It'll be good news, actually, if it means she doesn't have to move out, because I think she was a bit worried about that, wasn't she? Yeah, I think she does. Yes. Yeah. In fact, Alison's turned up in a most unexpected place. It's not quite as glamorous as running your own pub, but a job with the village cleaning company at least means she doesn't have to move away. And she's putting a very brave face on it. How do you find this work, Alison? Very rewarding. I mean, nice people, some gorgeous houses, um, no hassle. It's just very nice. Yeah, I enjoy it. Is it hard work? Hurts your back. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever done so much cleaning in my life, but yeah, it's nice. I do enjoy it. Uh, a bit different to running a pub, though, isn't it? No, of course not. You still meet people. You still have to do the work. Still get paid at the end of the week. No, it's all right. Is it refreshing, too, in the sense that you haven't got the responsibility, perhaps? Yes. I mean, that's one thing I do not miss at all. The responsibility, the hassle. If staff don't turn up, if something goes wrong, I don't miss them that. It's great. Because if staff don't turn up, it's not my problem anymore. So, it's lovely. Mm. You're smiling a lot more now than you were before. Yes. <laughs> Are you surprised? I know what my life's going to do now. Nothing's impossible, I have found. Alison doesn't plan to be a cleaner forever, though. She has other, more ambitious plans. Back at the chute, the band of beaters from the village is beginning the task of getting the birds into the air. After half an hour, though, not a bird in sight. Things aren't looking good for George. A solitary pheasant suddenly breaks cover. And that gets away. Even the dogs are getting restless. At last, in their ones and twos, a few birds make a dash for it. With the first drive over so soon, an air of gloom descends on the guns. Yeah, the, I mean, the cover's getting a bit thin now, isn't it? Yeah, it's just day, isn't it? Wind, strong wind, you won't get them up there with strong wind, is it? I guess now it's got the rain on top of it. How's it going so far this morning? A bit iffy. I think it was a pretty rough night last night. The these birds, they won't want to be out in the weather that way. They'll come in the woods. We'll see. Not many birds down so far. No. No. Just covering again this you bring your guests out to shoot and uh, you don't supply the birds. George is looking a bit worried. <laughs> right, come on then, let's get on. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> There's nothing George can do now but pray that things get better. Not a good start. Not, not a very good start, no. We shot seven pheasants out there, we should have had 30. The amount of birds that we put in there, we just couldn't find them. They just went down so tight on the ground, you just can't pick them up again. The birds are hiding? Yeah, they're hiding, yeah. They know what's on now. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, well, actually, I'll take the first. One man who can't help out at the shoot, as usual, is Paul, who's now being looked after by his mother. The treatment for his colon infection is having unfortunate side effects. Aggravates me, thus, <laughs> winds me up. Does I it? get so depressed sometimes, yeah, and fed up. It'd make me go mad sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, they do. Mm. It's I, really Sometimes I just have these violent, violent fits, to be yeah. quite honest. I've got to be honest, they've just been driving... It's just a combination, I think, of all the, the steroids, plus all the Everything time off. just building up. But as you just said, he does get these... Whether it's the steroids or what, but he just, just gets these all of a sudden. <laughs> what does he do? Well, it just hits the door, it's bangs just... the door, hits the wall. I just go mad. It just... Can't help it, you know. But like I say, the last 
The last couple of weeks have been a lot better. The last couple of weeks have been a lot better. This is embarrassing me. This is. The last couple of weeks have been a lot better, though. You know what I mean? Because I think. Paul's hopeful, though, that this evening's visit to the hospital will give him the all clear to return to work. You won't find it hard to get back to work after all this time off. Well, I don't know. I don't care really. I just want to get back. You know, glad enough now. He probably will, but I think Tony's Tony's been quite good because he has said to him that. Um, to take it steady, it doesn't have to go back full days, do you? He can no, sort of gradually work his way back into it. So he's, Tony's very good to him. So if he goes in the morning and then feels he's had enough by dinner time. I don't think I feel like I've had enough by dinner time. <laughs> he's a good employer, is he? He's, he is. He's brilliant. He's been brilliant to him. Yeah. He really has been good. Back at the shoot, things at last are beginning to look up. But that is unless you're a pheasant. Within hours of hearing he's to be a father, Pinky's back to work with a vengeance. I mean, a fingerprint. All people wear their shoes in different, in different ways. After the raid on the shop comes a spate of daytime burglaries. Listen, Roger. Don't suggest coming down here because I'm all right. I can manage. You need to find the person that, that, that's wearing the shoe. But um, if it is somebody local, we'll see. Have a good go in my bedroom. All the wardrobe broke. I'm sorry. The clothes are hanging up. There's nothing yeah. there. valuable. You don't have valuable clothes at my age. But, but they've taken the things that. They've taken the most valuable. They've taken the most. They've taken the most valuable, yeah. haven't they? Well, this ring and the rest of it, both from my husband. At the moment, going through that, that looks like they've taken. I'm just trying to think what. The, the watch what, would be in a box. Right. Okay. Can't think what. Anyway. They probably were taken them. Well, that's probably. Whoops. You okay? Well, yeah. Right. Um, probably well, I lost a good... my husband. I lost my memory, and it's not hasn't all come back. Okay. Do you want to come and sit? This here. I'm just going to have a sit down. Yeah. Yeah. I'll sit there. Well, you managed to send some over me at last, Bruce. I was beginning to give up. It looks as though the last oh, drive of the day it. may have made up for the disastrous yeah. start. It'll take some time, though, for yeah, all the shot birds to be tracked down. Then they go back. Yeah. Right, Things are looking up a bit, George. Yeah, that was more like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've come to expect yeah. from him, you see. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was good. Well, You're smiling for the first time today. <laughs> yeah, thank Christ. <laughs> yes. I was getting a bit worried there for a minute or two. But I think that's cheered everybody up. Yes, that's that certainly cheered everybody up. <laughs> All together, doubt it now. There's no one who can doubt it now. Yeah, it's not a person. Very good, George. The guns may be happy, but George wants to know if he's reached his magic number. Well, George? Well, we've got about 150. 150? Yeah. Well, that's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, those last two drives made up for the slacker ones this morning. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Good day. So you're relieved? Relieved. Take the pressure off me now. With a great start to the season like this, it looks like George's job is safe for another year. After a busy morning hoovering, Alison gets a lift from her friend Leslie to the bypass offices for a crucial meeting. Clearly, she's dressed to impress. Hello there, Bill Brown. After weeks of trying, Alison's finally got an appointment with Mr. Big. She's keen to break away from cleaning and set up her own business. To start with, it's all very hush hush. Mum? Yeah? I'll just take my dog out for a walk. 
Okay, make sure you keep them on the leash Although Pauls had his leg pulled remorselessly about his new pet, Chelsea, in fact his walks in the hop fields have helped keep his mind off this evening's critical hospital visit. We can only hope that things improve and I can get back as quick as possible, really. Supposing you were told you couldn't come back. What, come back here to yeah, work? you couldn't work again. Oh dear, oh dear, don't ask me that, Nigel. I've been off work for quite a while now and it's driving me bloody mad now. I'm telling me I couldn't work, might just about finish me off, I think. If I go to heaven, he'll be waiting there, my old dog. Back in the bypass offices, Alison's negotiations have entered a crucial phase. It all now hinges on one key issue. Would you be able to say so on the corned beef? Yeah, Would you be able to care to throw her needs? Yeah, that'd be no yeah. problem at all. But just to run through... She's hoping to clinch a deal to provide sandwiches for the bypass workers. Well, what we're doing, we're making them up daily on fresh bread. Um, it will be proper bread, not sliced, OK? Um, the bacon clubs like bacon, mayonnaise, lettuce, go yeah. down very well with men, like big double-deckers. Mm -hmm. um, egg and cheese. If anybody wants salad put in as an extra or anything like that, well, that is no... variation of any Yeah, that's no problem. Make any as sandwiches as, up. Yeah, as long as we know. OK, up at the top here, you said you've got a good selection of pies, scotch eggs and whatever. Would we be able to get the pies hot? Hot, hot. Yes. Right. right. Thanks very much, Alison. Thank you. Nice to see as you. well as having to convince the man at the top, Alison's got to entice the men on site to place the orders. How did it go? Very good, I think. Um, hopefully, I'm going to get some orders. I'm going to speak to him again later and see what response he's had. But hopefully it's gone really good, yeah, really this, well. This is a bit of a departure from cleaning, isn't it? Um, yes, but I mean, I've always been in the catering. So has Leslie, so there's no problem with it. And hopefully it'll be a really big business. I'm going to get around some more building sites now and get some more orders. So it's not just here you're hoping to supply no. sandwiches to? all around this area. So... To see how it goes. Can I have your own van? Yes, yes. When I pass my driving test. <laughs> if you pass your driving when test. When I pass my driving test, yes. What's the business going to be called? The sandwich run. You're going to get rich by doing this. Very rich. Very rich, hopefully. What's Alan in the shop going to say about this? Um, I don't know. I don't know. No comment. <laughs> In fact, Alan, the shop owner, is quietly seeding over Alison's business plans. Well, uh, probably not my trade a bit again, wouldn't it? Because they buy sandwiches here and uh, um, just have to wait and see. First I've heard about that. She started going around taking orders from the men and, and plans to deliver them the next day. Has she? Apparently corned beef looks like being a big seller. Uh, well, let's just hope I can still keep sending my sandwiches to them and my tray doesn't go down. Have got a minute spare? Hello. I'm Alison from the sandwich run. What do you actually think, Nigel? Do you think it's a good idea? Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it'll take off? Especially for us guys, yeah. All fresh cut bread. OK, they're all pound on offer at the moment. Yeah. If you're interested, could you see Suzanne yeah, sure. in the office? OK, put yours in. OK. OK? Sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye. You. Bye. -bye. At last, it's time for Paul to set off for the hospital. I hope all goes well for you. Well, a bit sure nervous. A bit nervous. do not really know, do you? Only hope for the best. Can't get any worse anyway, can it? No, not really. Can't get better. Hope so. This is it then, Paul, uh, this afternoon? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, I should know what's uh, happening one way or the other this afternoon, with a bit of luck. What's going through your mind now? Well, I'm a bit nervous about it, really, but not much I can do about it until I get there and decide what he says, you know. Hopefully, all will go well, but a bit worried. But I think uh, I'm feeling a bit better, really. But will you be back at work on Monday? Well, I'd hope to be back at work on Monday, but there it all depends on what they say, really. I've been off a long time now, so I could do it going back. I'm a bit fed up with it. Right, good, good, good luck, man. All right, thanks a lot. Yes. I'll see you later. All right. Good luck, Hello, man. See you see later. later. Hello.
It looks a bit edgy, despite he the does, smiles. He doesn't want an operation. He's, he's really scared that they're going to operate. That really frightens him. It would be quite a big thing then, would oh, it? Oh, very big, yes. Yeah. Is he brave about these things? Yes, he is. I think he's very brave. Yeah. Uh, he, he is in very, you know, very bad pain at times. He really is. I mean, he cries with pain. And it's not... He's a big man. You don't cry, you know, as they say. <laughs> but he does. It's... Uh, it's that bad, is it? It's that bad. Fingers crossed, then. Fingers crossed, yeah. All the fingers crossed. <laughs> Brian's up at the Cedars, where the famously boozy landlord Tell drops a bombshell. Ah, oh, sir. I did a silly thing, mate, when I was drunk. Oh, what's Stupid that? thing when I was drunk. What's I had that? a bet, hundred pound bet, I couldn't give up drinking for a year. And you're going to go for yeah, it? Yeah, loads of them jumped on the bet. Didn't they? So uh, <laughs> you I can't am like, afford uh, to drink. No, you're right, I can't. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well. So there we go. I keep waking up with hangovers every morning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Without the pleasure. <laughs> oh, terrible this morning, I'll tell you. In fact, so Brian's waiting from, here uh, for a secret track, rendezvous. Down the road a bit. Yeah. 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 I haven't seen Doing him a bit weeks. Caught him. No. A bit of court, no, 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 yeah. 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 A bit of marriage, is it? Well, <laughs> don't talk so serious. You must be yeah. made. <laughs> <laughs> you must be made. No, no, we're in the preliminary stages at the moment. Oh, we're not right. up to that yet. Right. Chasing shadows, just a dream or am I? Hoping I'll find a rainbow when the shadows roll by. Paul's mum, Grace, is hoping he'll be back within the hour. Back at the Cedars, and the person Brian's arranged to meet has finally arrived. ...is the fact that there are certain areas, uh, for one reason or another, that we are not allowed to either take off from, uh, land on, or we have to fly over... Brian's plans for a surprise balloon ride for his new girlfriend, Jackie, are running into problems over landing sites. Some of that belongs to me. Which is... Which, anyway. which is your boss? Uh, I believe that's... Um, Tony has a reputation for discouraging balloonists on his land. How will Tony react if you land in one of his fields, do you think? Well, I'm not sure. Not, I shouldn't, if we landed in one, probably not very well. My only problem is, I mean, Murphy's law with balloons is whenever you take off and you're hoping to go in a certain direction... You go in the other one. You, exactly. <laughs> you'll turn around and do 180 degrees in the other. And next thing you know, we'll be floating off down towards, yeah. I don't know, Hazelmere and <laughs> number 10 here on the list, which I know just says lion, which is a bit of a worry, so we'll try not to land there. Apparently right. someone's got a lion out this way. Now, Brian's bringing along his girlfriend, who right. doesn't know anything about this. Yeah. Now, are you used to coping with the sort of surprise element? Of this. Totally. The thing is, the balloon is going to be so obvious. Isn't Absolutely. It? It's going to be standing in front yeah. of you. She will see it. She'll see it uh, probably a, a good sort of quarter of a mile oh, before right. she gets yeah. to it. That's so right. if you just, when she gets in the car, you know, to, to yeah. maintain the element of surprise right, right to the end, yeah. you know, blindfold her and, right. and sort of earmuff her, and so she has absolutely no, no idea, idea what's going on. Right. Supposing she throws a wobbly and says, I'm not getting in that. I'm sure we can find a way of getting her into the basket. You'll persuade her in one Absolutely. way or another, will you? What sort of height? height do you go? When you get to 1,500 feet, I mean, it's amazing. Well, you, you, with the benefit of, of 1,500 feet, you get, I mean, a huge... You can see all over the place. 1,500 I mean, you, feet? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I thought about 15 or 20 or so. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 oh, I'm sorry. It's 3 o'clock now, he should be back Paul's been at the hospital a lot longer than anyone expected. Now he's back, and with him comes the news he and his family have been waiting for for so long. Hello, Paul. All right. How'd you get on then? 